uh, it's a very uh, great pleasure and attending this webinar and thank you so much to the Saga Secretariat and the organizing co-chairs for this invitation. Um, the polar regions are at the epicenter of global warming. They offer a unique perspective on the effects of climate change on ecosystems and weather patterns. Through studying them, we gain valuable insight and understanding. Knowledge from these areas are also relevant to the situation in the Himalayas and vice versa. Due to the size of these polar regions and the complexity of the problems, international science collaboration is necessary. This is why, for example, Norwegian and Indian scientists regularly work together at the New Ålesund research station on Svalbard, the northernmost part of Norway, and on joint projects in Dronning Modlan in Antarctica. For Norway, Arctic is not a remote place covered by ice and snow. The northern part of our country, well above the Arctic Circle, are modern, innovative and vibrant. It's home to 10% of the Norwegian population. Norwegian communities have always been dependent on the ocean. The ocean means food and jobs. Through fishing, ocean fish farms, oil gas production and shipping, we have created economic value not only for Norway, but for the rest of the world. Norway has a long tradition for making use of the ocean in a prudent and sustainable manner. A key tool to this is our integrated ocean management plans for Norwegian sea areas. These plans are ecosystem-based, consider multiple uses and pressures, and seek to reconcile competing uses and ensure sustainability. In early December, the High-Level Ocean Panel on Sustainable Ocean Economy, chaired by Prime Minister Solberg of Norway, and President Remegensau of Palau will present recommendations to protect oceans worldwide better and to release the enormous economic potential of the ocean resources. The recommendations will be based on the best science and expert advice and will be an important input to the UN Ocean Conference next year. Norway has a long-term experience in cooperation with other nations on sustainable management of ocean resources. The joint Norwegian-Russian fisheries manage management in the Barents Sea is a prime example and a success story. The North East Arctic cod is one of the largest cod stocks in the world and creates important economic revenue to actors in both countries. For a small nation like Norway, multilateral cooperation and governance is crucial. This is why we look forward to taking on a seat in the UN Security Council for 2021 through 2022. Sustainable development and clean, healthy oceans are among our priorities in New York, as they, have, as they are every day in both business activities and environmental management tasks in the Arctic and the Antarctic regions. An extensive national and international legal framework applies to the Arctic. The United Nations Law of the Sea forms a solid basis for cooperation in the region. The Arctic Council, firmly supported by, by its member states, indigenous peoples and this observers, including India, has been the primary international arena on Arctic issues for almost 25 years. It has been instrumental in setting the agenda developing new knowledge about the Arctic and building trust across borders. Constructive international cooperation is the norm in the Arctic. Norway welcomes engagement in the Arctic from India and other non-Arctic countries within existing governance structures and in accordance with international law. The international interest for the Arctic is increasing and a key driver is climate change. The temperature in the Arctic is increasing almost three times faster than the global average. This is dramatic, not only for the Arctic, but for the entire world. It is not directly linked to the activities in the Arctic, but predominantly due to activities and emissions outside the region. This is why the Paris Agreement is so important. It is the main legal vehicle for reducing greenhouse gas emissions globally. Norway intends to do our part. 
our current target under the Paris Agreement is to reduce emissions by at least 40% by 2030 compared with the 1990 level. These climatic and environmental challenges need extensive international research cooperation. That is why Norway has facilitated international polar research in Svalbard, an archipelago close to the North Pole, for more than 50 years. Norway intends to further develop Svalbard as a platform for international polar research in the coming year. In the glaciated landscape of Svalbard, the Norwegian Polar Institute coordinates the monitoring of glaciers around Niolesund, and Indian scientists are contributing to this important work. Ankit Pramanik, one of the two Indian PhD students who were trained at the Norwegian Polar Institute through financing by India's Ministry of Earth Sciences in the period 2015 through 2018, did his research work on the glacier in the Olsen. The close co cooperation on polar research between Norway and India is also very much in place on the other side of the globe. Vikram Goel, the other Indian PhD student, receiving his training on the ice shelves of Dronning Maudland in Antarctica. In the Norwegian Indian Mad Ice project, researchers relied on both the Norwegian Troll Station and the Indian Maitri Station, which are neighbors in the Antarctic context for their fieldwork. The researchers found that an ice shelf in East Antarctica melts five times faster from the ocean near its front, ice front than elsewhere on the ice shelf. This is important to better understand Antarctica's current and future contribution to the global sea level rise. Aniruda Magankar, the new Indian PhD student who has just started at Norwegian Polar Institute, will continue the work to better understand how sensitive the Antarctic ice sheet is to climate and physical change in the coastal zone. The researchers at the Norwegian Polar Institute and National Centre for Polar and Ocean Research are also planning research projects addressing the challenges of marine plastics in the polar oceans. The Norwegian-Indian cooperation in the Antarctic underscores an important point. As part to the Antarctic Treaty and members of the Commission for Conservation of Marine Living Resources, the Kamalai, Norway and India have common interests in safeguarding the unique international cooperation under the Antarctic Treaty. The core of the treaty is scientific collaboration as a basis for safeguarding the environment and the Antarctic ecosystems and to ensure the use of a cont continent for mankind's best. Concrete results from scientific research in, from and about Antarctica over the past 60 years have improved our knowledge about natural processes taking place not only in Antarctica but also globally, including the impacts of global environmental change and the contribution of human activity to this change. Norway's interest in the polar regions spans from overarching uh, political ambitions to pragmatic bilateral cooperation on research management and natural science projects. This webinar is a valued platform for sharing experiences and exploring opportunities for even more cooperation between India, Indian and Norwegian polar scientists in a broad range of fields of expertise. I wish you the very best for the conference. Thank you.